time for another webisode of the Don and Mike program. Oh, yeah, I love that. Oh, that is good. <laughs> for Robbie calling me, ruining it. Ruining it. Well, he called you early. Did you have enough time to enjoy the uh, overtime moments? Ruin it, yeah. Ruining. Woke everybody in my house up. <laughs> when he threw that pass up, I mean, ah. girlfriend, dogs, right. everybody. Wow. Yes! I went crazy. I almost was going to call you at that time. <laughs> I'll just let you talk to Carrie for a few minutes. <laughs> Don and Mike show. Hello. Don, it's Carrie. Hello. Oh, hi there. Oh, it's Sample Man again. It's a good soundboard. You know me? No, who are you, Sample Guy? Mr. T. Who? Mr. T. Oh, Mr. T. Timely. Don't look at him. I'm talking to you. Cut the jibba jabba. Bye. Sorry. Yeah. Not thick enough. Goodbye. Here's something that I find rather interesting about the state of radio. Mm -hmm. Radio, what would life be without it? Now, Bruce Springsteen should be very happy. He has the number one selling disc in America. Mm -hmm. uh, he'll probably get a Grammy for, uh, for this disc. But there is a hitch. Radio is not playing any songs from Bruce Springsteen's new album. Why not? Uh, Buzz, I asked around. Yeah. I, I looked in some of our radio magazines. Pretty good, I've heard it. I, I asked some people that I know at radio stations. Uh, the album itself has sold, uh -huh. I think it sold a half million copies uh, in a couple of weeks, and it's, and it's near a million. Right. Um, the problem is that the rock stations say uh, nobody cares about Bruce Springsteen. The light rock stations say, eh, we got all that we can take. The top 40 stations say... Yeah. So, mm -hmm. what Columbia is doing is sending out a remixed version. There's a girl on the, there, there's a song around there on the Bruce Springsteen album called The Girls in Their Summer Clothes. It's a great song. Well, I've not heard it, but I'm, I'm reading something here that Columbia is giving the song, quote, a poppy Beach Boys type remix that they hope will give this Bruce Springsteen song some airplay. Is that with the blessing of the maestro himself? Or are they I just, uh, do they have the right to go and I guess, and uh, contractually do, they can do what they want? They can do whatever they want. Because you remember back like when Dancing in the Dark came out, yes. they put out disco extended mixed versions of all that. Yeah, I played those, yes. That, that's what they're doing now. So. Well, not that's a, unfortunate. Not even a fan of, of Bruce Springsteen. I, I normally don't really like his stuff, but I've heard this album and that song in particular, great. I find it very hard to believe that a guy could have the number one selling record in America, and there's no radio station playing it. Maybe that's part of the problem with Redidio. We uh, we have a weird world musically and with radio right now, and yeah. it's very, very difficult to put my uh, finger on exactly what's wrong with it. You know, uh, I, And then I last night, it. if you watch that Monday night game, boy, they're good at whoring out that game. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. not only did they say we're going to have Deanna uh, Favre in the booth and right. Vince Vaughn in the booth, all night we'll be playing songs from the new Eagles album. Yeah, after 28 oh. years, the Eagles are doing Which it. is available at Walmart. And I say the album, yeah, yeah. wait 28 more years and try harder, guys. <laughs> yeah, You're not a, not a fan? Not really. It sounds... It seems, I haven't heard any of it yet, and I'm excited because I kind of like the Eagles. Well, I'm a huge Eagles fan as well. Right. Um, and I like even some of the stuff that... Did they, they play all of it, or I mean, I mean, did they just give you little blurbs on uh, Monday Night Football? My God, they played lots of the hooks, and I'll just tell you, it's... Uh, it's good if you like the soft rock sound of the Eagles. Oh, really? Like peaceful, easy feeling kind of Eagles? I'd say that maybe is a little bit too rocky. Really? From what I heard last night. Is, is, it, a, is it a Henley-ized album at all? Is it got a little of a Henley feel? Because it's I got, like Henley. It's got a lot of harmony. I, I like Don Henley, too. It's just, it. I don't know. To my ears last night, in the couple of seconds I could hear, it sounded like... Alabama or some. Yeah. Well, they're getting they get a lot of country play. Isn't that where the uh, speaking of radio? Isn't that where the Eagles are getting most of their play now? Is on country stations. I think that's where they're getting a lot of airplay. That I don't know about. Then there's also this about the Jay Leno, Conor O'Brien ah. thing. Now, it, this is a screwy deal that Conor O'Brien's got the job, mm -hmm. Jay Leno is giving up the job, but then Jay Leno decides he doesn't want to give up the job, and they're going to pay Conor O'Brien fifty million bucks if they if they decide. Not to give the Tonight Show to Conan O'Brien. Is Jay Leno going to pack it in, or does anybody even know? Uh, Here is what the president of NBC said yesterday. Jeff Zucker is this guy's name. Mm -hmm. Jeff, now, Jeff Zucker. Watch these quotes. Hello. Conan O'Brien will take over the Tonight Show in 2009. Will. What will happen to Jay Leno? We're in those conversations now. 
we're hopeful Jay will still be with us. That's it. Uh huh. That's a little weird. They're trying to keep him with the network. That's very cryptic. Yeah, it is. Maybe he'll be like Bob Hope and just have an occasional NBC special. I think so. Yeah, wow. And one more thing here from Florida. Thank you for said this from Delray Beach, Florida. Uh-huh. Uh, the cops put out a list of the most common criminal names in their database from the last three years. First names? Yes. Nick- okay. Nicknames. Um, hold on. Well, I don't know, Buzz. Do you want to read the story? No. We're just helping. He asked if it was first <laughs> names, and you said you didn't know, so I said they're nicknames. Well, you're right, Buzz. Uh-huh. It is nicknames. Uh-huh. It's nicknames? It's nicknames. Is Spike in there? The most popular is Peanut. Peanut? Second is... Doesn't sound like a criminal. Second is Big Man. The hey, third, I get that all the time. Third is Champ. Mm-hmm. Fourth is Pee Wee. Right. Then you have Betty Boop, Bebop, Bam Bam, and Beanpole. <laughs> How about Babs? Also arrested in the last three years, a.k.a. Buttercat, <laughs> Boy George, Horsehead, Chicken Man, <laughs> Guy Boy, Tweet, Snake, Stinky, <laughs> Donkey Weed, <laughs> Donkey Weed, huh. Drunk Mo, and Snowman. Uh, excuse me, uh, we, we hated to bang on your door here. Have you seen Horsehead around here? Well, he kind of looks like this. Yes. <laughs> where was that from? That's where is it? Buzz, you know more about this than I do, apparently. Where the hell is Delray Beach, Florida? I'm not. Uh, Mike lives down there. Mike, do you know where Delray Beach is? Delray Beach, Florida. I live in uh, Fort Myers, Florida, and I'm not sure exactly where Delray is. Let's see if map. I can track That's it That's one of the bits of show prep that we got sent from our station in South Florida. South Florida, where we used to be on the big band music with Frank Sinatra? That's right. Super duper. That's how the Don and Mike show localizes for you. Our syndicated stations. Does that mean that those nicknames come up like again and again and again? Over that the, the last... same guys have the uh, like peanut surfaces again, or perhaps the peanut is arrested continuously? Peanut is the most popular in the last three years. Mm-hmm. Nine criminals in their database have the nickname Peanut. Peanut. Uh, <laughs> peanut. Big man is second with five criminals. How many does Horsehead have? Horse. Horsehead. <laughs> two. <laughs> two. There are two horseheads out two there. Two horseheads. Also, two donkey weeds. Mm-hmm. Donkey. <laughs> I believe donkey weed might involve uh, selling some sort of illegal substance. What? Just my guess. <laughs> I haven't heard it on the block. You know what they do down in Fort Myers, uh, Florida? One of the things that they did down there, speaking of the criminal justice system, the uh, the local newspaper down in Fort Myers actually comes out every year with the worst habitual drunk driving offenders that they have down there. And on the front page, they put a guy that's just been arrested with his bloodshot eyes. <laughs> I sued. <laughs> Good for you, I was Mike. furious. Good for you. I was furious. Delray hey. Beach is right between uh, Palm Beach and Boca Raton. East Coast. That's why mm-hmm. I didn't know it. Not familiar with the East Coast. And that's why we got said that from our station down there, WME, and that's right where they are. So mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm West Coast, baby. That's right. I also yeah. just uh, got this. <laughs> Big battle between East Coast and West Coast in Florida. Florida. <laughs> I just got an instant message from a buddy of mine who is a board off for our station, uh, a clear channel radio station, and he wrote, uh, Don... Uh, radio will not play magic. Uh, well, I was talking about Bruce Springsteen. Uh-huh. He writes, uh, Clear Channel has sent an edict to its classic rock stations, ordering them not to play tracks from magic. Why? It's okay to play old songs, such as Dancing in the Dark. Uh. Clear Channel wants to send a clear message to radio outlets. At age 58, Bruce Springsteen is too old to be played on Clear Channel rock stations. That is That's ludicrous stupid. beyond belief. As a current artist. Uh-huh. That is so strange. Okay to play him as an oldie artist. If the music's right. good, what the hell? Well, the main thing is people are buying the stupid record. Yeah, right. ha-ha. Right. Hello, Don and Mike show. And we're just dancing in the dark. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike. Hey, two quick things. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody got you. Del Rey's on the East Coast down near Fort Lauderdale. Thanks. And uh, hey, for the uh, the sexy women going for the regular schlups, you, did, you guys didn't fess up on your true off-air relationship with Leah Remini. And the wild three ways you'd have. Oh, that's right. When Mike and I would make a Leah sandwich. Yeah, but that's back when uh, Don and I were both, uh, we both had 29-inch waists and we were very, very bulked up. We were cut, actually. Let's be honest. Enough time has passed. We forced ourselves on her. (laughs) In a good way, though. I mean, it was was kind of prearranged. Hey, Don, look. She had a a word that we don't like. No, that terrible connotations. We don't have that word. The what call it? 
mm-hmm. is she was okay with you two. But me and the tubing, she no. hated. it. Didn't like you being there at all. Never worried about that. You used the tubing the wrong way. Well. You were supposed to tie people up, and you just tied it hey, around yourself. I if know. you know what I mean. I had lots of tubing. Rob tied it around him. And you kept calling out instructions that Rob. seemed to, they seemed to come from Rob should each other. not even be in this playlet. <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> it's making me uncomfortable. Let, he let, forced himself into the Leah playlet. Let's just cut through. The play- I don't like him being here anyway on this discussion. <laughs> Bye, you Rob. Don't please leave this play. Bye, tubing? Rob. Stage Bye. left, please. Bye-bye. Tubing. And like I said, that's an ugly word, mm-hmm. and that's not, that's not the way it was with Leah. Not at all. If anything, well, she, us. Right. Right. And we all enjoyed ourselves at the end of the day. That's the most mm-hmm. important thing. It was wonderful. It was we, special. We woke up and there was Rob with tubing. And then somebody had to stay overnight because he couldn't get enough. Somebody had to stay and mm-hmm. linger and be out there all the time with her. And yeah. somebody was sent home. Mm-hmm. That's someone who's never, in real life, never going to get those days back in his life. <laughs> <laughs> At the time, you enjoyed it. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, Donna Mike show. She was in the magic box. At the time, heroin addicts also enjoy shooting heroin, Mike. At the time. But later they wish they had that time back. I always fantasize about you padding around that house. Sure. That was a really, truth be told, maybe the most boring night of my life. For sure. Spending the night at Leah Remini's house with her goddamn ultra-sensitive burglar alarm set <laughs> so that I was afraid to move past my quadrant of the house. Right. Afraid I would set off some motion detector. Oh, hello. As your, as your elbow deep in her underwear drawer. And the whole time I'm there just with the, the crazy thought that maybe she'll like walk out and forget I'm there. Like, oh, I'm naked. I forgot. Uh-huh. Did you harbor any fantasies whatsoever? No. None? No, because she never... One thing about Leah Remedy. She always, she's a very nice lady. She is. It's a shame that she has not uh, responded to our periodic olive branches. Mm-hmm. She made it pretty clear right up front. Well, first off, I was happily married. Yes. Right. And she was happily married, and she made it a very apparent that even if I was Adam and she was Eve, nothing would happen <laughs> because you always like hearing this. Hey, you're like my brother. Yeah. Which is why mm-hmm. she came down to breakfast with right. no makeup on. And I, and I thought, well, in a way, this is nice. I get to see a TV star all hagged out. Right. But it's only because she thought of me as a brother. Right? Yes, exactly. And there, there wasn't even any cuddling. No, no, it's like, you know, <laughs> she came down and... I remember the morning she came down in her PJs. And they were just like old-time TV man's PJs, bottom right. kind. Mm-hmm. And seriously, without makeup, she was puffy. And I could have maybe tried to peek between the buttons. The buttons. Mm-hmm. But I was too horrified at what I was actually seeing. Right. Oh, my God. This is what she really, really, really looks like. Was she offended that you came to the breakfast table in just a T-shirt? <laughs> was she? You know, was that? Or did she? She was kind of matter of fact about that, you know. And the excuse that you use, of, this is the way I, I walk around the house by myself See, whenever I wake up in the morning. We're blurring the line because we're goofing, but on one hand, <laughs> seriously, I was such a mental patient. When we were friends with Leah Remedy, I actually bullied myself into, one time we were out there, spending the night at her house. Stayed at her place. Yeah. Not because I thought I was going to get anywhere with her, right. but because I'm a goddamn jock sniffer TV sniffer. Well, and you thought it would be good for the show, which it was. It was highly entertaining as you were talking about that. But I do remember you being just a little bit let down. At the whole experience, mm-hmm. you know that yeah. uh, you know this, uh, bunking with a, a TV star was not the uh, the yeah. mo- most fun experience you ever P-U. had. Hey, you, you know, I didn't get to see her without her makeup. Great. And then you went out. You a went. A lot back. of people went to see Saw Four this weekend too. <laughs> you went back for more though when you went out with her and the the whole uh, recording session oh, with, with Angelo. Oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. With with Barry White's wife. That's right. Who didn't like you, right? That's right. Was very angry. Too bad. Very frustrating. My evening. night in the Hollywood Hills. Kicked out of a recording studio by the late Barry White, Barry White's wife. Mm. And that's the last uh, foray into the Hollywood uh, world that we've uh, we've had. Mike Hola, we are going way, 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 way back down the way back machine. We got to live in the now. Yes. What is tomorrow, my friend? Tomorrow is All Hallows Eve. That's right. And what is that I hear? Very good. This is the. Uh, Buzz? Yes. 
just ahead of the news. Let me pod that down for just a moment to play this. We never got to our fantasy football results for week number eight. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. In the damn dummy league, here we go. Joe Ardinger's Westies defeated my Lombardi's 93-84. to 84. Ooh, close game. The Buzz Killers uh-huh. beat Rob A. 89-62. Dashing his hopes of running the table. Michael Sean Patrick Tex O'Mara, 90. Former producer John, 79. I am a 7-1 and one now. And yeah. the big winner for the week, Matt the Polak. His team, the effing asses, beat my son's team, the fighting drunks. Wow. 109 to 96. Ooh, Ooh that is a that is a handy victory. Wow. Here you go. In the dumb division, as Mike just mentioned, you've got the Americans at seven and one. Would that be uh, by any chance? Uh, I haven't looked at it that much. Would that be the best uh, record in the league going away? It's another pro- shot up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mike. All right. Followed by John, the ex-producer, at five and three. Uh-huh. Matt, the Pollock at three and five, and Bart at two and six. In the Dumber Division, Joe is in first place, five and three, tied with Buzz. At five and three, uh-huh. I'm at three and five, and Rob, who is not going to have his microphone turned on, <laughs> is at two and six. Thank you. Now, <laughs> game Rob, shut up. <laughs> shut, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. I don't hear you. Shut, shut up. up. <laughs> and we're not even, we're not even going to spin the wheel of Holly today. We're just going to give you a little sample of Holly Morris, just a little taste this morning. A taste of Holly on Channel Five, <laughs> just a little bit now. Uh-huh. Very good. With that, who's ready to go into the ghoulish garage? <laughs> All right. Hey, listen, we're going to attempt that. Coming up in our next hour, plus we'll have some more magic from Eric. So stay with us as we are live this morning from the creepiest crib in all of the greater Washington area. It's right here in Rockville. Back to you guys. All right. <laughs> all right. Holly. This is really going to be scary. I'm not kidding you this time. Okay, Holly. <laughs> we'll spin the wheel of Halloween, Holly, as well uh, tomorrow. All right, Holly. On the show. Now it's time for Buzz of the News. Someone's on the door, though. My apologies, Buzz. We got an early trick or treat right now. Trick or treat? <laughs> That's right, it's me. I'm back. Look at me. I'm a condom. If you're going to shag it, you better bag it. I'm dancing with the stars. And now here's Don't you like my condom suit? Buzz Buzz Buzz. Hi, everybody. Happy this news, is the Buzz. News. Thank you, Tom. Good That's you. Meryl Howard Kayla. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he wonderful? Uh-huh. Fabulous job. <laughs> That's right. I'm going as inanimate objects now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's like it. That. Slightly off microphone. I like that. <laughs> Isn't that right, Mr. Newsman? That, that's right, Tom. <laughs> and here he is. Thank you. Oh, oh, time for another sun. costume. We got a motto during this segment. Uh-huh. You snooze, you lose. Well, I wasn't sure if Tom was... Trick or treat. That's right, America. I'm a colostomy bag. Who'd like to empty me? Should be fun. I'm dancing with the star. <laughs> I love Halloween. <laughs> Clearly. Hi, Don and Mike. Jump in anytime. Hi, Buzz, and now it's time for the news. Not to change the topic, but have you had a colostomy lately? I say this to everybody. It's your own fault for liking reality shows in the first place. Now, there are too many to count, most of them bad. And more reality shows appear to be in our future because of the pending Hollywood writer's strike. The strike could begin as soon as Thursday of this week. The first time you'd really notice would be next fall when there are no TV series, just wall-to-wall <laughs> unscripted stuff. What could I'm possibly sorry, do you go care, wrong? Do you care that the, the Hollywood writers are going on strike? Which is, your, is your burp a sign of indifference to yes. that? Yes, it was a, a <laughs> protest burp. <laughs> a protest burp. <laughs> yeah, who cares? Yeah. Quoting one reality show producer, I was in a network meeting today and they were referring to the fact that the timing is really good for reality producers. Hey, I, I've seen some of the stuff I... I I read Entertainment Weekly magazine uh-huh. that the crap that they've got piled up now, in case there is a writer's strike, right. please, I, I'd almost say bring reality TV back. I, I mean, the sitcom ideas that I saw are so incredibly stupid. One of them is called, I know I take it back, it's a reality show called Farmer Wants a Wife. Mm. And it's one of those that when you first hear it, you think, like, oh, it may be funny, right. but I'm sure it will suck. Yeah, yeah, it'll suck. And then one of the scripted sitcoms had Jeffrey Tambor playing a washed-up talk show host. Ooh. Obviously kind of 
trying to trade on the Larry Sanders thing. Uh -huh. Yeah, that, uh, I don't and know. I, I read this article in, uh, in the Entertainment Weekly magazine where they said, this is what the networks have planned in case of a strike. And in every single instance, I went, oh, suck, suck, uh -huh, suck, Because uh, we're suck. so saturated with it already. But don't come whining to me when House isn't on. And they have some reality show on in its place. That's a scripted show. And you, you speak, like you like that show. You but speak for the writers, right? Here's I the do. Thing. When is this strike going? If it happens, it will trickle down and mm -hmm. affect us, the regular viewers, when? Next fall. Will Dancing with the Stars still be on, though? I'm curious about yes, that. Yes, no writing required. Of course, there'll be plenty of that. And tomorrow right. is promised promise to no one. So as long as the writer's strike is not affecting tonight's TV, uh -huh. I'm fine with it. I understand. Again. One of the writers... My God. One of the writers in one of the Law and Orders has a four-year-old and, and another kid on the way, but he says he's willing to risk it all by standing up for what's right. Oh, what a brave man he is. Let's make, a, let's make a, a, an erection to him. That would be quite an erection. <laughs> in this case, Wright is giving the writers a piece of the profit when their work turns up on DVD and the Internet. Their bosses say, not until we see how much profit there's going to be. I'm always on the side of talent, mm -hmm. and... I guess the people that write the scripts are talented. Yes, Absolutely. they are. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but it seems to me you, you reach a point when everybody wants to stretch that penny mm -hmm. to the point where, okay, this guy gets this much, and this guy that gets this much. We live in an age now, doesn't everybody agree, where piracy and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Where's piracy? Where is that? Arg. What happened to that tape, Rob? Where's, that? Where's the piracy? Did not make the cut. Oh. Oh, it didn't make Well, never mind then. Um, there it is. There it is. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> They're so worried about the nickel and dime stuff. The, they who? The writers or everybody? But yeah, everybody. Well, the writers want to get their they, they taste of sure. it. And they that's, want, you know, they're, they're, it's not like they're not fairly well compensated right. now. Uh -huh. they, yeah. they want their money. The actors want their money. Right. The directors want their money. Then the studios are saying, we want our money. And furthermore, we're going to slice the pie even more. Mm -hmm. We're not going to put our stuff on, on iTunes anymore. We're going to start our own site. We're going to charge people our own money right. for our own shows. And then they're going to come and they're going to say, hold on a second. You got a new revenue stream now. We want a piece of that, too. How many ways can you stretch a goddamn penny? Mm. And all these shows that they write on TV, with the exception of two or three of them, right. aren't they all really just boxes of, of shog dit? Yeah, <laughs> I, I agree. I would say that about the reality really, shows, I mean, though, given the choice. No, Buzz, hold on a second. Yeah. Uh, the show Back to You with Kelsey Grammer, uh -huh. which I guess is getting... Did they finally cancel it? And that got no. a full season renewal. Oh, yeah. It's, God! It's Let me just tell you. Its ratings have been good. My humble opinion, mm -hmm. I would watch Deal or No Deal or Survivor before I watch a tired, old, same goddamn Kelsey Grammer going, Oh, I'm... I'm very snooty. And then <laughs> yeah. Patricia Heaton goes, yes, and I'm the C-word. Then they go, you're on the air. Hi, Eyewitness News. That's right. Yeah. Yuck. What if they uh, pay only for original ideas? <laughs> that would, Then everybody would go broke. There are no original happened. ideas in Hollywood, though. That is true. They'd all go broke. Mm -hmm. But well, don't, I, I mean, do, do you get what I'm saying? I do. At I understand. Point, it's a legitimate thing. No, you get frustrated about hearing the money thing I was talking about. It's even in sports when I was talking about the A-Rod thing the yeah. other day. I mean, it's just everywhere. No. And, and, and it's insane money. And about that, I, Mike, uh, I guess you were right about that. Oh, you bet your ass I that was. Not, uh, I saw that that agent for A-Rod made a half-assed apology to the Red Sox, the Yankees, Major League Baseball. You're right. I, uh, people... Well, and also Joe Buck and Tim McCarver. I mean, talk about missing the ball on that one. I mean, everybody, I, I, mean, I know so many people that felt that way when that came on the fourth game of the World Series. They make their big announcement. And, uh, and A-Rod, it's, it's had an amazing backfire effect on A-Rod and his agent, Scott Boris, who I thought was a smarter guy than that. Anyway, I, I, I was, I was the thinking that it was just Red Sox fans getting mm -hmm. their panties in a wad, but it's, it's like sports fans everywhere. And you know, when you're making, when you have a $250 million contract, and you're, you know, and they're, they're, everybody's saying now it's about the money. That's what it's about. And that's kind of where, uh, with the writer strike as well, Buzz, if this is going to happen, goddamn, you studios in Hollywood. And I'm not blaming the writers, though. I mean, I, you know, what, I, what I'm saying is just, you know, spread the pie out a little bit. I mean, it's, really, there's plenty of money to go around for everybody. Exactly what I was going to say. Right. When you go to the studios themselves, mm -hmm. they could certainly afford to say, okay, you're going to get a cost of living. We're going to give you... A penny on every DVD will give you a penny on every download. It's so much money. And it's you know so much more money that than the average American can even fathom. Right? They'd that never they could even, spread it around. They'd never notice it. No.
It's no. the same money that these asses use on their corporate jets to fly around the world. Or paying the stars, you know, the, the you know, mm -hmm. tens and tens and tens of millions of dollars. I mean, it really, it, there shouldn't, it shouldn't come, are you saying basically it shouldn't really have to come to this? Right. right. There's it shouldn't be this little, you know, are they really trying, and what it is is the executives, the studios that are just trying to hold on to, you know, mm -hmm. they are, they're nickel and diming these guys. Yeah, yeah I agree. As it turns out, though, real life is very much like a reality show with a winning team and a losing team. Real life is, is very much like a genetic game of Survivor. Talk about your evolution theories, and we will when we return. You know what? What? You're book smart. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> He's going to be right back? Uh -huh. oh, I yeah. had another costume. <laughs> Hi, Tom. Yeah. Trick or treat. Trick or treat. Look what I am now. I'm Heather Mills' artificial leg. <laughs> it's about time on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> Pay the writers what they want. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. <laughs> this is the Don and Mike Show. We did something very bad. Did you wreck the car? No. Did you raise the dead? Yes. But the car's okay. Uh-huh. All right, then. I know it's going to be scary. really scary. This is really going to be scary. I'm not kidding you this time. Wasn't that scary, huh, kids? Surya ya viene llegando. That's scary. Oh, wasn't that scary? Huh? Huh? Suckle ah. their knuckles. The Don and Mike Show. Yeah. All right. This would probably be a good time for a, a bowel movement. Why, you mother-grabbing bat? Oh, never buzz. What about weed? Is it going to be any weed? Hi there, Buzz. Hi, Donna Mike. How are you anyway? I'm well. I think you're going to like this. A respected British evolutionist has made a projection about what lies ahead for us humans. Looks like baby vomit. If we make it another 100,000 years, Oliver Curry sees us splitting. The human race splitting into two distinct species separated by type, not color. One species would be a superior version of what we are now. The other would be goblin-like, small, ugly, and stupid. <laughs> and although we'd both be the color of creamed coffee, the superior humans would be smarter, taller, and better looking. They would live longer. What makes a Nazi? <laughs> How does he get that way? To be more specific, women would have large eyes, glossy hair, completely hairless skin, and breasts that never sag. Men's facial features... Oh, the last one I like. I, I, I like kind of the whole thing. The whole thing. Men's well, no, not completely hairless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good for you, Mike. Thank you. Thanks for not being gross. Thank you very much. <laughs> Men's facial features, according to this projection, would be symmetrical. Their voices would be deeper, and they would be more like Peter North. Oh, you mean bigger? Peter North. Oh, mm -hmm. my God. Would mm -hmm. they be able to shoot? Uh, no, just or they'd have more. Bigger, just bigger. More stuff. Bigger. Just, yes. A larger package. Bigger packages. Yes, to be specific. The taller people would be or yes, everybody? The, the, no, the taller people. The, the, Not the goblins? The more superior uh, humans. Pig really. Venus. I, uh, well, I don't know. Pig Venus. <laughs> uh, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought you were talking about pigs for a moment. Uh, Curry, this, this anthropologist evolutionist says... Oh, it's Pig Latin. Exactly. I understand that now. Huge heinous. <laughs> Curry says people are becoming more selective in their breeding, and that's what's guiding these changes as well as the splitting of Passive the species. Passive meanness. Erpel pay. Oh. Elbert hay. <laughs> Ig bay, alls bay. Any bay. <laughs> we get into, uh -huh. Do we get into trouble when we no. do think that? No, we don't. Step away, Rob. You don't know the rules. <laughs> I was just looking at him. I know, but he comes and he steps in that way like, hey, watch it. Watch it. <laughs> I'm here. Step, I, I had nothing to do like, with just, just step away. Step out of the line of fire. <laughs> out of the line of hot fire. <laughs> vain, you're so vain. <laughs> vain, vain, vain. Vain, vain, vain. vain, vain. Exxon on a different vein. Oh, look, it's the oh, door. I'm sorry, Buzz. You're going to try to there. It's that time of year. Trick or treat. Tom Bergeron dressed as your favorite porn star, Peter North. Look how big I am on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> wow. Exxon may get out of Makes pain. Makes you want to hit the delay button, doesn't it? Oh, more than anything. <laughs> I, hate, I hate comedy. Hitching. <laughs> he actually, Tom Bergeron told me he has a variety of porn stars that he'll be dressing as on the Halloween. Wow. There's one now. I'm sorry, the Trick or treat, I'm Ron Jeremy's unit. 
That's right. Look at me. I'm smiling back at you. I'm dancing by the park. Veiny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lots of veins. Yes. So no more on the goblins in the... Uh, cause that was no, that's, that's the projection. Is it uh, Two species of humans. One tall, handsome, and smart. The other short, ugly, and stupid. And, of course, what will happen will be that the superior species will subjugate the lesser species. Unless the... No, no, no. no. Do your green goblin. Hmm? If we're going to turn into goblins, do your green goblin. Green goblin? Oh. Spider-Man. Hello, Spider-Man. Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a goblin, but I'm really Willem Dafoe. <laughs> Exxon may get out of paying $2.5 billion in damages to the people and businesses hurt by the oil spill of the Exxon Valdez. In the early 90s, Captain Joe Hazelwood of the Exxon Valdez drank some vodka and rammed his ship into the coast of Alaska, coating 1,300 miles of coastline with black, sticky goo. Yep. 11 million gallons of crude oil. It not only messed up some animals, air, land, and sea, it wrecked people's lives. Fishermen, natives, landowners, small businesses, even whole towns. But Exxon says it should not have to pay two and a half billion dollars to those people. Well, Exxon says it can't be held responsible for Captain Joe's condition, especially since somehow the captain was acquitted of the drunk boating charge. That was not funny. No, it wasn't. But Exxon says it's paid enough in the three and a half billion it spent cleaning up the mess. And now the Supreme Court says it will consider these things and possibly let Exxon off the hook. Are you calling him Captain like Captain Crunch? I am. C A P apostrophe M. Captain Joe Hazelwood. That's right. Captain, Captain Drunky Drunk. Captain Joe. Uh, Exxon's the world's biggest oil company with a profit just last year of $39.5 billion. It would have to give up nearly a month's worth of profits to cover <laughs> the rest of the damage. You know, that's when we get back to the whole thing about money, like mm -hmm. with the writers yep. and the studios. At some point, you look at something that somebody nice... Who just gave a million bucks? Somebody just gave... It was the race car driver, wasn't it? Oh, Jimmy Johnson gave a million dollars to the wildfire relief fund. Oh, that's right. We just right. talked about that. Um, and you look at that and you go... Well, I think it was $100,000. That, that's right. extremely... Whatever or maybe amount, it was a million dollars. Whatever right. amount. And, and some celebrity recently gave a million bucks. Yeah. You look and go, well, that's incredible. That's a drop in the bucket for them. And then Bill Gates says, well, he's going to do something. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Bill Gates has enough money right now. Mm -hmm. If money solved problems, mm -hmm. he could really solve the world's problems. I think the about problems. the uh, you know, the world's problems, which I think all come from the fact that you look at the areas where, where the trouble comes from and you look at the conditions and you say to yourself, you know, when you're dealing with how many billions of dollars does Exxon make in profit? Uh, last year it was 39 and a half I'm all, I'm all for capitalism. I am too, but I sure. think at there's a limit point, to though, it. At some point you might just say, you know. It's crazy. Listen. Three hundred million dollars profit. Uh, you know, we can do maybe we can make make it make buy on two hundred ninety five million dollars. Yeah. And out of that profit, I would love to know, and I think a lot of Americans would love to know, out of the, all that profit, you know, where is it going, and, and is it really going question. back into developing new technologies, or is it you know is it going to the CEO's house? Mm. You know, you wonder about that. Yeah. And who's that dude that I saw on TV today? Um, Buffett. Warren Buffett, yeah. right? Jimmy's brother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Berkshire Hathaway. He was walking around his office having a good time. Now, he, he was doing this for TV, uh -huh. but he was walking up to the receptionist and saying, how much do you pay in taxes? And she's like an hourly worker. Mm -hmm. Anyway, everybody in his office pays more taxes than he does, yeah. and he's like a multimillionaire. Yeah, and he was complaining about it. Right? Yeah, That's why I mean, he's smart enough. He, he's a good philanthropist, too. I mean, he yeah. does yeah. give away a lot number of them are. Mm -hmm. Companies, not so much. Individuals, more so. Uh, your boss will Yeah, but you got a guy like Bill Gates. That, mm -hmm. that's, that's what makes me nuts, because mm -hmm. Bill Gates seems to be like a tree hugger. Bill Gates seems to be a pretty liberal guy who wants to donate to make the world he a does. better place. Bill and Melinda Gates. I he, get, he does more than a lot of companies. Yeah, he does. Yeah, I get that, but still, I get to the end of the day with him, like, he's sitting on a pile mm -hmm. of 80, put as many zeros behind it as you want money. You can't tell me that he couldn't just say, you know what, I'm just going to give 20% of my earnings to charity. Mm -hmm. That's and huge. he would still have enough money to wipe his butt with thousand dollar bills mm -hmm. every day of his life. Yeah, and you look and you listen to this story about Exxon and you say, you know what, well, they've already paid three billion dollars yeah, two and a half out of their whole nut. And since that happened, uh -huh. if you added up their profits and, and profit. not necessarily, you know, giving it away to the people that might have been suing them, giving it uh, you know, to, to the people that can implement environmental strategies to mm -hmm. get the coast of Alaska back. I don't know, man. It's just, it's it's nuts. And it gets back to what you were saying about the music industry when you really say, and it gets back to A-Rod. I think it's all tied into what you were saying before. Where, I mean, 
at a certain point, and you don't want to be anti-capitalism. I believe in capitalism, but how much wouldn't you love to is see a, enough, really, to solve maybe some of the great problems we have? Let's be specific. Wouldn't you love to see A-Rod sign his contract, which will be for what, for $300 million, mm -hmm. and have him say, you know what? I'm going to give $10 million right up front to help rebuild New Orleans. Right. You know what that $10 million is to him? Right. Very seriously. It's the $20 that you and I have in our wallet right now. Yeah. It's $10 million bucks that Alex Rodriguez will never see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, uh, it's scary sometimes. Very scary. If I was richer, I'd do more. Mm-hmm. I understand. I just, I'm not rich enough. I understand. There's that rich level rich that enough. you talk about when you're talking about, you know what you're talking about? These guys with contracts that are hundreds of millions of dollars. And in the case of Warren Buffett and uh, and also Bill Gates, you're talking about billions yes. of dollars. Billions. Billions. Oh, and don't get me started on stupid Jerry Seinfeld. Mm -hmm. you, know, uh -oh. you want me to go see B-movie? Mm -hmm. Please, Jerry, who I'm about to want to strangle now from those HP commercials. And the right. ads. Where you have to promote your stupid wife's plagiarized book yeah, in nice the that HP he was put, commercials. Nice that he was putting down the, uh, the, the, the lady that accused her of plagiarism, too. Mm -hmm. I didn't find that credible. Jerry, just in case, you know, just in case you think you're smarter than the world, that you your, your little snide comments you made on Letterman last night about uh, about this book, uh, I didn't buy it. If you're paying attention to that, Jerry Seinfeld, I didn't buy the fact that she didn't plagiarize it. Yes, everybody has food, and people mash up vegetables. We're talking about specific recipes yeah. see, going into your wife's brownies. Have you seen the commercial I'm talking about for the for HP? No, I haven't it's seen just that one. his hand. Yeah, yeah, it's, and it's, it's says, like and B movie promoted too. I'm Jerry, and oh yes, DreamWorks says you have to get two B movie uh, mentions here, mm -hmm. and there's my wife's book. Right, a and it's all done with graphics. And I oh. look at that and I say, I just read something last last week that said last year. He made sixty million bucks mm -hmm. last year, mm -hmm. and you're looking year. at a commercial for a product that he gets uh, paid to endorse, while at the same time he's promoting the uh, the his wife's book, which he's going to make money on, that, and the movie that he's going to make money on, and the TV show that he makes sixty million dollars mm -hmm. a year for has been off the air mm -hmm. for seven, eight, nine, ten years now, or however long it is. I swear to Christ, I don't know how these people live with themselves. If I was ever blessed enough to be in that tax bracket. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to look myself in the mirror in the morning right. without saying, okay, if I'm going to go out and buy 20 Porsches today, mm -hmm. maybe I'll pay $20 a month to, to save some starving kids somewhere. Right, exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm just not rich enough. And it if just everyone seems to would really... just make me rich, uh -huh. I'll take care of everything. And this doesn't just go to America. This goes around the world. And you wonder, really, where does all this crap come from? Where does this terrorism come from? I really think it comes, you, you know, you go and you see where the breeding ground is for, for, for a lot of the problems we have in the world. Right? Won't you? I mean, it's amazing where these people live and the conditions they live in and, mm -hmm. I, you know, and the desperation. And that's where all this stuff comes from. Would you please make me rich. Please make me rich. Mm -hmm. Please. please. You all can, I would ask. You if, can trust me. Won't you? I will. I, I promise I'll use most of the money to help people. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> and if I hit the Mega Millions and I do play the Mega Millions... I would use a minimal amount on eBay. Mm -hmm. Of course. A minimal amount. A little amount. spending money. That's right. Sure. It's a car. <laughs> the Pope's prescription for pharmacists and other stories when we continue. Oh, look, it's the door. We got more trick-or-treaters, too? Jesus Christ. Trick-or-treat. I'm Tom Bergeron, dressed as Bill Gates. Look what happens when I turn over and I poo. Dollar bills come out. I'm dancing with the stars. Excellent notion. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> this is the Don and Mike Show. The Don and Mike Show. Rude, thoughtless little pigs. Don and Mike. Bow, 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 bow. Check out our website if you get a chance. Bow, 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 bow. Don and Mike website dot com. Bow, 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 bow. Jim Nance's picture's up there right now. Here is Buzz Gridley. Hi, Buzz. Hi, Don and Mike. Buzz has on a layered look today. Right? <laughs> uh, t-shirt and like a long t-shirt underneath. That's right. All the kids are wearing. Sexy. Thank Buzz you. Buzz is kind of a hippie, 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 Berkeley, California, hippie swinger, uh -huh. Malibu. I love it when you do men at work. <laughs> wowie, wowie. So do I. Buzzy, wuzzy. <laughs> the, the Pope is telling pharmacists not to hand out condoms or any other birth control product, including the morning after pill. Yeah, it's a very bad business. There he is. I'm uh, Pope Ratzenberger. That's right. <laughs> hey, Dale. Oh, 
It's a ghost. There's a ghost here. It's Halloween. There's a ghost. It's John Paul. Ooh. JP too. How you doing? Who do you like? Uh, who do you like in the big game? Uh, Patriots. Uh, Colts. There, uh, Pontiff. Original. I am flesh and bone. <laughs> Not anymore, Mister Man. I am just a big floating Enos Pay. <laughs> I'm the Ope Pay Enos Pay. That's the ghost of Pope John Paul. Comes to me in my dreams. That will be the name of my book, incidentally, when I rewrite all of our religious beliefs into one easy-to-understand concept for everyone. Uh -huh. The Pope has a penis. Ah, huh? very good. Because he's a man, just like us. I look forward to reading your tome. He's a man in a funny hat, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and yet we treat him as if he's God's choice. Mm -hmm. He's just a man with a penis. Well, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> How you doing, Ratzenberger? Yeah, doing okay. Uh, sometimes I can't see it. Oh, dear. Oh, you're getting heavy. Yeah, getting a little heavy. Got a little beer belly, a little German beer belly. Putting on some weight. Yep. Uh, speaking to a convention of Catholic pharmacists, the pot have said their bosses would just have to understand their conscientious objections. Objections to, quote, products that have clearly immoral purposes. There have been lawsuits lately from pharmacists who do object to being ordered by law or by their employers to dispense what their conscience or their church won't let them. Joey Buttafuoco's old friend Amy Fisher, the Long Island Hi, Lolita, Joe. as she was known, is apparently the latest star of, Joe. The, of the latest sex tape. Ooh, uh, the one she and her husband made earlier this year before they filed for divorce. I'd look at it. It's now in the hands of a Los Angeles porn distributor, and Amy Fisher is not happy about that. I don't know if I would watch. No, I take it back. Yeah, I take a peek. I'm curious. <laughs> of I take a peek. I watch animals having sex on the National Geographic Channel. Of course I'd watch that. And there's so much good stuff there. Thank you for telling me to get that good dish. <laughs> so, all, it's, all of it in beautiful high def. Uh -huh. High def. I, love, I especially love watching what animal is it? It's an insect that while they mate, one of them lives and one of them dies, uh -huh. and the one that lives eats the other one. Pray That's the CBS vice president. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and what's going on at CBS? The stock was up five bucks. Mm-hmm. Something tells me this company's about to be sold or something. Our <laughs> heads are about to roll. I've always hoped that we would be sold to China. Based on the strength of a really good show yesterday. That's what did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Amen. Please. Get out of here. Would you... <laughs> oh. uh. So once this uh, divorce began, then this sex tape turned up in the hands of an L.A. porn distributor. A Amy Fisher very unhappy about that, and she's not a woman you want to make unhappy. The Long Island Lolita. As a teenager having an affair with Joey Buttafuoco, Amy ultimately shot Joey's wife in the face. Red Light District Video hopes to start selling the home video next month. Oh, in time for Christmas. And finally, you know you're drinking too much when... The whole family's on the sauce. In Northville, Michigan, a man was stopped for DUI, and his 12-year-old son was with him at the time. Mom had to come pick up the boy at the police station, and then she was arrested for DUI. If you don't have education, then you can't hardly get a job. Kids have been turned over to relatives till all this comes up in court. You know you're drinking too much when the hangover lasts seven months. In Scotland, a man walked into an emergency room last, last fall with wavy vision and a month-old headache. No! Doctors checked absolutely everything, ran every conceivable test, and they were stumped until they found out by talking to the man that he had drunk five dozen pints of beer in four days after a fight with his wife. Gracias. It took six more months of treatment for the hangover to go away. Oh. Buenos dias. Oh, my God. <laughs> It could happen to you. Oh, my God. I'm Buzz Burbank on the Don and Mike Show. Oh. All those years, Buzz, and you finally got Mike. You finally got a story that's got him upside. I'm scared S-less. Well, don't drink 60 pints. I'm sad. Uh, all say. right. Stop at 59. <laughs> right. We got to go. We'll see you tomorrow with our spectacular. Yay. Until then. Safe home. Good day to you, sir. Good day to you, sir. Good day to you, Good sir. Day to you, sir. And Ed. Amy Lynn was an executive daddy, and I said, Amy, <laughs> shut the cabinet. You win. <laughs> I don't have any tonight. Marilyn Chambers. I oh. had her last oh. week. Oh, you had her last Jenna week. Jenna Jameson. Ah. ah. I'm dancing with the stars. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's at the door. Again. Trick or treat. I'm a pope. <laughs> a funny concept to leave you with as Don and Mike say goodnight to all of you. And please, watch Dancing with the Stars. Okay. Night, Tom. Bye.
This is the Don and Mike Show. Gosses Garage with Pat Goss. Brought to you by BG Products. Weekends at 11 on 106.7 WJFK.